Hey, fight fans, welcome back to Stan and Bang Radio. Uh, we are here with the Miller Brothers, Jim and Dan, and from what I just heard during the break, Jim, you are winning on the beer drinking competition, is that correct? That's what? Right. That's right, yeah, Dan. <laughs> Dan, Dan, close, get, Dan's getting his nursing degree. Oh, no, Florence Nightingale over here. Well, how many have you had? Let's Shut count up. them. Shut wait, up. wait, let's count them. <laughs> Jim, do you, do you have a nipple on your bottle? <laughs> you know what? That would actually be really nice. Dan, go get me a nipple. <laughs> so Jim's never coming back on this show again. <laughs> Well, there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with nursing a, a beer as long as it's a good one. What are you guys drinking right now? I'm drinking the Founders All Day IPA. Nice. And I, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got some hard ciders for our, for the our jujitsu instructor that we have here, and I'm drinking one of those. Dan got it for me out of the fridge. No, I asked if you wanted You asked if I, while you slurp yours down. <laughs> it's hard cider, right? So you're drinking coolers then, boys? Yeah, yes. So that's right. what you're telling you're drinking, you're drinking coolers tonight? <laughs> coolers. <laughs> Cooler. Coolers, that's, eh? That's just as bad. Drinking some coolers, eh? Every, every, just so you know, guys, every episode, he's got to make fun of my accent at some point or another. I don't even think it's there, but he tells me it is, eh? And I don't know, really know <laughs> where the fuck that shit's coming from. Yeah, say. Well, don't you know, my yeah. wife is from Minnesota. <laughs> yeah. He keeps calling me a hoser, and I don't know where any of this stuff's coming from. Oh, crap. <laughs> All right, so during the break, you guys, uh, you guys talked about uh, the gym putting a, a crimp in your beer making in your beer making process. Yeah. But, yeah, it, it sucks. But normally, you guys uh, outside of the cage, you guys are uh, avid beer makers. Is that correct? Why don't you go into that a little bit? Tell tell the fans about making your own alcohol. Um. <laughs> well, we both started when we were underage. Yeah. <laughs> Atta boy. It's been a long time. Yeah. So. Statue of limitations. So. <laughs> uh, you know, years ago, Dan Dan, you know, gave it a shot. They, him and his friends made a couple beers. Um. And this was like before, you know, before, the, before you it was kind of big. On. Yeah, there was there was uh, weren't that big of suppliers, and the ingredients were always old and crappy. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, you know, I saw them do it, and I, I, I got intrigued by it. I'd read some stuff about it, and um, a couple of years down the line, um, once I moved into my the house that I'm in now, I had like, kind of the space to do it. Um, I try, I tried doing it, you know, I brewed a couple, couple batches of beer and, you know, and they came out well. And, um, so then, then I drug Dan out of beer retirement. So, uh, you know, we've been brewing, uh, three years now. <laughs> yeah. It's been a few years and, you know, we, we will brew usually, uh, either 10 or 20 gallon batches, you know, so you're, you're looking at like a 20 gallon batch is eight cases of beer, uh, which is quite a bit of beer. Um, but we, we give a bunch of it away and, and, um, usually that type of stuff is for like parties and stuff like that. And, um, we do a lot of like, uh, American ales. Uh, Oktoberfest is one of our best. Yeah. Oktoberfest is one of our best, but that's not really an American ale. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> well, I was going to list American ales. Yeah, sorry. You know, like an amber, a brown, a red. Sorry. See how, see how much of a demon he is? <laughs> I heard that. Shut up, Dan. I'm talking about ales. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> but yeah, so we, you know, uh, we've been, you know, the last, you know, two or three years, we've been like kind of developing our own recipes and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it's, it's a cool process. And, you know, not only the brewing itself, you know, which is, 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 you know, fun doing it because you just get to sit around and drink beer. Um, but, uh, you know, building a brew stand, building kegerators, stuff like that. Um, we like to, we like to do things. We like to build things. And, um, and then, but then we also like to kind of share the stuff that we do. So, so beer is actually, uh, a perfect, perfect thing, you know, because everybody wants it. So, um, you know, it's fun to, to, to go through the whole process and then, you know, um, have people enjoy it and, and stuff like that. So. Well, that that's a that's a great hobby. Uh, it's just a shame that uh, I think the name that would have been most obvious for your beer is is, is taken. 
<laughs> yeah, eh, it's all right. Sorry, yeah, it's I'm just... pretty sure there's going to be some sort of copyright infringement if you guys are like, hey, it's Miller time. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> on a positive note, it's good to hear, like from what you guys are talking about, it sounds like you really know your craft and you guys really know how to make beer well. And it's really encouraging to hear that some Americans out there know how to make good beer. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Don't even start Molson. <laughs> <laughs> Molson. We call we call that gutter water up here. <laughs> okay, well, black blue. Yeah, we call that gutter water too up here. <laughs> what do you see the do you see the Canadian backpedaling really quick? I'm going to make fun of Americans, eh? Oh shit! <laughs> All right, let's just keep going here. Yeah. Shut up, Bob. <laughs> I hate you guys. <laughs> All right, and so you guys were talking about uh, Dan. We'll let you field this one. You guys were talking about liking to build things. That probably comes from the fact that you guys uh, originally worked with your father in a construction business. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, my father, you know, he had a construction business, you know, since we were little, and uh, we worked with him over the summer since you know I'm probably around 12 years old. Uh, worked summers, and then uh, I got out of high school, tried the college thing, didn't really work out, and. Uh, Started working with him, you know, around 19 years old and worked with him up until I signed with the UFC. And, and uh, you know, after Jim got back from uh, Virginia Tech, he uh, came and was working with our dad, too. And, you know, just, you know, he's he's pretty much the biggest influence. He's one of, the, you know, he's one of those guys that he uh, he does everything for himself. You know, he, uh, you know, fixes cars, fixes his own cars, fix, you know, built his own cabinets. Um, every time the, the, uh, the oil burner broke, he fixed it himself. <laughs> and swear like a yeah. friggin' sailor. <laughs> That's where we got our, uh, you know, our swearing. Cunning, uh, cunning linguistic skills. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> We're like four deep over here. Speak <laughs> for yourself. Six over here, buddy. What? <laughs> no, yeah, he's got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we we are the Millers standing up in front of a meeting and uh <laughs> we've admitted to God that we have a problem. No, go ahead. I'm sorry, Dan, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, it's fine. You know, uh yeah, we've always done it. Um just watching him and uh you know, it, it's enjoyable too. I, I like, you know you know, building stuff and, and, and working on stuff. You know, I have a motorcycle, uh, an old Harley that I you know I work on and uh been working on for a while now, trying to get it <laughs> street worthy. But uh, you know, it's just it's fun. Okay, and so is that um, uh, working with your dad outside construction things like that? Is uh, I know you guys are avid outdoorsmen. Is that kind of where that that came into play? Have, uh, do you just come from an outdoorsman type family, Jim? Um, yeah, you know we mm. as kids we uh, you know we lived like. Mm. I don't know, our 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 house was like surrounded by some state and town land and stuff like that. So, I mean, you figure basically we were trespassing, but yeah. <laughs> we, we we more or less like lived in the woods as kids. You know, I mean, we were always, you know, climbing trees, swinging on vines, you know, just doing stupid shit. <laughs> that, uh, but it was, you know, we were always outside. If it was, it didn't matter if it was raining. It didn't matter if there was, you know, it was cold. It, none of it mattered. We were always, always doing something outside. Um, so we always, you know, played around and, you know, our dad hunted a lot as a kid. Um, but then when we were kids, he was, you know, he was busting his ass, uh, you know, trying to provide for, you know, family with four kids. So, um, we actually, wrestling practice, yeah, practice. I mean, he, he coached. Everything. Yeah, he coached whether it was baseball or, or football or wrestling. You know, he was coaching one of us and, uh, you know, bringing the others around here. He never, you know, when I was in high school, he never missed a match, you know, and, and, um, yeah, I mean, he was always just busting, busting his ass. So we really didn't get to start hunting, um, until we were in our teens, late, yeah. later teens. Um, you know, it was kind of something that, you know, the two of us and our older brother, Michael, um, went and did on our own, um, cause we wanted to, you know, we wanted to share it with our dad and we wanted to, 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 you know, to do it. So, um, but we were always, you know, tracing through the woods and, and 
farting around. So um, you were you were always traipsing through the woods. I'm gonna stop you right there, Dan. Did did I hear a dead soldier hit the garbage and a new one get started? <laughs> no, he just farted. <laughs> oh, because I thought I thought for sure I, I heard a bottle hit the garbage and then click uh, going on. I I'm starting to get a little bit concerned for this guy's liver over here. He's not doing much talking and. Can pretty much you hear him belching and farting and chugging back there. It's not a competition, Dan. The show's almost over. Just settle down. <laughs> it's always a competition. It's always a <laughs> it doesn't matter what you're doing if you're if we're eating. Yes. If we're eating, it's it's a competition. I always, I always win that. One. You do not always win that one. Always. <laughs> Listen to but this. That actually brings brings a good point. I kind of want to give the fans an idea of Dan and Jim growing up. I mean, it's it's an oddity that two guys from the same family end up fighting in the premier uh, MMA organization in the world. You guys always been fighting, always been competing with each other. Is this something that you knew was going to happen? or uh, Dan, why don't you give us a little insight on growing up, Miller? Um, <laughs> Jim and I rarely fought as kids. I was always, <laughs> I was always like 50 <laughs> to 70 pounds heavier than him. And uh, it never was really a fight. I just kind of pushed him in the face, pushed him oh. down, sat, ooh, threw a blanket over me, threw a blanket oh. over me, just whooped his ass. Picked on me. Still, I still All right. Him, whooped his ass. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, my older brother and I were—I uh, was always big. I was, you know, big for my uh, my age, I guess. And uh, my older brother and I were always the same weight. And he was two years older than me. And him and I always. <laughs> would always get into it, you know, fist fights. We would, uh, you know, wrestling. Um, he didn't like that I could take him down. So, uh, he would, we would start, you know, getting at it, going harder and harder. Next thing you know, we're, you know, had a fist fight rolling around on the ground, you know, punching each other in the face and coach would run over. But, uh, Jim and I never really fought, you know, as, uh, as kids. You know, I was just too big. So, but we always, we did. It was a competition. Yeah. We were always doing something though. We were always, Playing, you know, we would play with the three of us. We would play rugby, yeah. like like every man for themselves rugby. <laughs> and so it's basically like kill the man with the ball. You know, I get lucky if the ball popped out while they were, they were fighting each other, and I would run and score. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, we always, you know, we were always just doing stuff. And once I once I like, you know, had hit puberty <laughs> at like twenty. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey guys, let's yeah. fight. <laughs> and, and, and got a little bit like, of, out of college. Yeah, I'm you out know, of college, you know, yeah. So, <laughs> but, yeah, we were, I mean, the, the, the winter, the fall and winter before we started training jiu-jitsu, from what, that was 2004, 2005? Yeah. Uh, well, and like, you know, the, the, basically the year leading up to that, but that, that winter specifically, I mean, we would just, we would have like mock, MMA fights on the job didn't matter when where what we were doing and it would just break into a grappling match or something like that and we didn't know what the hell we were doing but we would just go at it you know like yeah, yeah. my dad right? had no control over the job site. <laughs> yeah no yeah <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah I mean so then we would we'd, we'd couch wrestle and you know and I mean it's you know you'd have the Miller Brothers rules which are a little bit more open than unified <laughs> rules. There's there are certain things involved that I don't really want to get into <laughs> that aren't involved in MMA fights. <laughs> but are you are you sure you don't want to get uh, into that? What well, uh, I think I want you to get into it. All actually. Right, all right. So <laughs> it's not that you could attack the groin, <laughs> but, but if it was vulnerable, it was vulnerable. You you know you can just give it a little just, just to kind of get let the guy know that you know hey it's there your package is open you got to protect yourself I'm just, I'm just giving you a heads up if this was a street fight I might be ripping it off but I'm just gonna give it a little squeeze right so, now so so what you're saying is that cup checks cup checks were allowed oh yeah well it wasn't even yeah it was more of a little goose yeah it was a grope <laughs> it was a grope <laughs> that's brotherly love. Let's see, I never grew up with brothers, so like this is like a foreign concept to me. So it's for my own personal edification. Stop lying to yourself, Mark. <laughs> well, I got two boys now, right? So I'm keeping my eyes open for this sort of, this sort of stuff. So is this normal? I know this is normal oh, now. They start let kissing me, each other. Let me tell you something. <laughs> let me tell you something about raising a boy. When they realize that hitting you in the nuts hurts you, 
they will accidentally do that uh, quite often. My, my yeah. son realized that about a year ago, that if he jumped up on the couch with both knees and crushed my balls, uh, that I roll, <laughs> off, roll off the couch and start crying. And, and now he ninja attacks me uh, on a regular basis. All right, so you guys are, uh, you guys are grappling, grab ass, and tweaking balls. Uh, when is it that, that when is it that you guys realize holy put it shit? Like that. Don't put it like that. Come on. <laughs> All right. All right, you guys you guys are wrestling and grappling on the job site. When does it kind of yeah. start to to show that um man, we we might, you know, we might do something. And then just kind of isn't it wasn't it surreal that both of you guys got picked up by the UFC? It was uh you know <laughs> back when we were you know working stuff before we were watching uh, Pride and the UFC and stuff, and basically the only reason that we were, you know, screwing around so much and and uh, fighting on the job, we didn't have anything to do. We we're so used to wrestling and and uh, competing, and uh, that kind of just stopped. And uh, it was like, I, it, you know, needed something to get our you know energy out, so we uh, decided, you know, both wanted to kind of to pursue it, so we you know found a place that did jujitsu and started that and i mean it was literally we did two days and then we were there six days a week five days a week you know, seven days just, a week. just training <laughs> we just picked it up and, and loved it and it was something that uh you know it, we just decided that you know this is what we wanted to do and and started doing it and uh trained three months did a grappling match and then uh right after a grappling match we signed our first fight and you know, three months later, we had our first fight. So six months into training, we had our first fight, and we were running. And uh, you know, that was one of the best feelings too. Was was getting signed together. Um, you know, getting to sign the sign the dotted line, right? You know, sitting next to you know, sitting next to your brother. It was really cool. Signed as a package, if you will. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's. Uh, I don't know. You you just definitely don't see that. Um, too often, and so now that has become a very integral part of your life. How many guys, I mean, sorry, how many years have you guys been in the UFC? Yeah, six, 2008, we signed. Uh, so yeah, six, six and a half years. So if anybody, you know, for the, for the newer fans, that might not seem impressive. For the hardcore fans, uh, for two brothers to sign at the same time and then to have six or seven year careers in the UFC, that's more or less unheard of. So obviously, uh, Mr. Miller, uh, did something right with with coaching <laughs> and raising you guys. I mean, obviously, not too many people get to be career ass kickers. So, my hats off to Mr. Miller. If I ever uh, if I ever meet him, I'll definitely call him Sir. We're, we're, we put all the, it's it's all our mother. Yes, yeah. our mother. You know, our mother's tough as hell and, and <laughs> comes from a good line. Uh, her brother was a, a two time national championship wrestler. Wrestler, or other uh, two brothers were state champion in New Jersey. So uh, we got all the toughness from her mother. Oh, okay. Well, what I meant, what I meant to say is my, <laughs> what I meant to say is my hats no, off to Mrs. Our Miller. Is a beast. Yeah, he's a beast. I love how you guys just threw your dad right under the bus. <laughs> well, that's the only thing we can do. That's yeah. the only thing we can. You, you know, we grew up with him, and he was like a cartoon character. You know, <laughs> he really was. He really was. He was, you know, six four, two forty, but like basically unstoppable you know he he was a a, a framing contractor and instead of using a regular hammer our dad would make his own hammer so he would take like a, a one of the 32 ounce you know uh like framing heads and he would take a, a sledgehammer handle and he would cut it down so he had like a two foot long handle on his hammer it was absurd looking but when he would wield the thing you know it looked like he was just flicking his wrists and he'd be driving, you know, 10, 12 penny nails just right in on one shot, you know? With a 32 um, ounce hammerhead? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, Holy he was a, shit. He was a, he was a beast. He was a beast. And, yeah, uh, I, uh, we actually, go ahead. We actually saw, saw him carry a, uh, well, on more than one occasion, um, the one, one building that he was working for wouldn't backfill that well around the foundations. Um, so when we were trying to get the, uh, the, the beam set in the basement, um, you'd be able to get him in on one side of the foundation and then we'd have to try to carry him over to the other side. And we're, you're talking about like a 40 foot long, uh, beam that was, you know, what were they? 12 by 18 or something like that. So this is an eight, 800 pound beam. 
you know, his he was just tall enough where his shoulder would be in the center point, and he could get that beam leaning into the into the basement and pick it up and walk it across the basement floor and pick the other end up and, and lean it up onto the uh, onto the foundation, you know. And it's like, you know, this was this was the guy that you know was your dad. <laughs> it's like you know, <laughs> ridiculous. So he kind of kind of set the bar high when it came to uh, to to being tough and and. and uh, and just getting get, getting things done, basically. No kidding. Was he irradiated he's, by he's, gamma radiation? I was going to say. <laughs> his last name Banner originally <laughs> is or something. You've seen him nearly die way too many times. You know, seen him cut his leg with a chainsaw, get hit in the head with what would have killed basically anybody on the planet. You know. So uh, your father uh, was the last son of Krypton or is the last son of Krypton. Is basically he probably, yeah, probably, probably. Wow. Well, if you've seen him work through the crazy stuff yeah you know he he would cut himself and he'd be squirting blood <laughs> and he wouldn't stop he would just keep carrying he's like dad just stop <laughs> dad stop you know come on the only, like, the only oh, reason he would keep going is because he thought he looked cool though yeah. <laughs> <laughs> after i invent the internet people are going to talk about this <laughs> yeah no kidding so this can... explains a lot while you guys felt the need to be professional ass kickers okay well, I'm starting to, this is all coming together yeah. now I think a lot of the toughness that uh, that we gained, you know, truthfully, it comes from watching him. You know, you don't. He would do stuff where you know he would get hurt, but it didn't stop him yeah. from from doing anything. And uh, you know, if he would just continue working or continue, you know, whatever he was doing, he would just continue doing going on. And and I'm sure it hurt. Yeah. But uh, you know, he he just he just would block the pain and, and keep going. And uh, and as you know, as we grew up, it was like. Yeah, that's what I kind of, you know, I think that's what we kind of wanted to to do too. I mean, I would be working with them, and I would hurt myself, and for me to stop and cry and bitch yeah. about it, it, you know, I didn't want to be looked as as a you know a sissy. So you know, you just go whatever, keep going, and and uh, you'd be hurt, but you know, but there's a job to, temporary, a, a job to get done. Yeah. so you did it. You know. Okay, but so that that's that, the thing is if, that begs if the there's question. A job to get done, do it. Yeah. That begs the question: How did Jim end up a diva? What uh, what was he doing? Well, I have seen my dad ride around on the floor like a little Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> he dislocated his toe. He dislocated his pinky toe chasing Dan, and he, and he was whining and crying on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's it's just the perspective in, in which you yeah. see Mr. Miller. Yeah. You know, it's when, it's when you got stuff to do, it doesn't yes. matter how how much it sucks. You're gonna get it done. I can just kind of see conversations on the construction site where Dan is like, "Holy shit, Jim, my thumb just fell off," and Jim's like, "Get back to work, pussy. Don't let Dad see." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when yeah, when we're doing stuff like working or fighting, it you know, you just continue on. Mm -hmm. um, but. I've hurt myself in practice and cried like a little baby because it was like, that hurts like hell, man. <laughs> but, uh, you know, in a fight, it's just, you know, when I broke my thumb, it was sideways. I don't, you know, it kind of broke. I thought I dislocated it. And, uh, <laughs> I came back after, <laughs> into the second round, like from the, after the first round. And I was like, Jim, I think I dislocated my thumb. I was like, you got to put it back. And, uh, so he like hides, you know, puts himself in front of the camera and he grabs it and he's like, and just pulls it and it just crunches. <laughs> and I, I saw I saw Van Damme do it in a movie or something. I decided to grab and twist. I remember just putting my face against his shoulder and just screaming like I was like Aah! and and it was like and just like it crunched and it didn't feel like it was dislocated. And I looked at it and it just went right back to being crooked again. And I was like, it's not dislocated. And he's like, all right. Don't throw that hand. Okay. <laughs> it's like, all right, let's go. I just kept going. But, you know, there plan, was a, to... plan A didn't work. Let's go, let's go with plan B. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, the Van Damme School of Medicine rarely works out. You know, I think that's also the Mel Gibson School of Medicine. You know what I mean? My shoulder popped out. I'm crazy. That let's pop that back in. Yeah, it that works just like that, right? No, that that shit. Uh, let me tell you what: as a chiropractor, that shit never works. Uh, kids, <laughs> kids, do not listen to Van Damme uh, or Mel Gibson. Yeah, none of that stuff. 
Hey guys, um, before we wrap up, why don't you go ahead and take some time to uh, to shout out to the fans and potential customers over there. Let everybody know where the gym is, uh, hours, what you guys offer, and, and stuff like that before we sign off. Um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's Miller Brothers MMA, um, located in Sparta, New Jersey, 22 Gale Court. Um, you know, we uh, we put together a, a facility that um, we ourselves as as you know, fighters fighting at the in the UFC and at the highest level of the sport, um, wanted to train at and and uh, you know really really tried to do things right and and um, you know have a have a have a facility and, and a gym here, not just a you know a room with some mats in it. Um, yeah, our, our website is MillerBrothersMMA.com. Kept it very simple. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've got uh, um, Sean Santella is is uh, our head instructor for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He's a guy that um, we we've trained with for for years now. Um, very uh, you know very motivated to learn and and uh, you know very very good grappler and and fighter as well. Um, right on the cusp of uh, making it into the UFC as a, as a 125 pounder. Um, and our, uh, Muay Thai instructor right now is, is, uh, Nick Avalos, who's uh, a guy that, um, both Dan and I've been working with for a few years now. Um, you know, and, and, and he's got, uh, a, a great style of coaching and, and, um, you know, really loves the sport of Muay Thai and, 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 and also is capable of, uh, kind of translating that into, into MMA. Um, so we've got some phenomenal coaches, more classes coming, kids classes coming in a couple weeks here. Um, we're gonna have like a cardio, kickboxing, ultimate fitness type thing class going on. Um, that myself, I will be, I will be instructing for the first couple of weeks at least. Um, and uh, yeah, we got we got more stuff coming, um, and we've got you know the best facility and 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 the best best coaches in. Uh, <laughs> did I just say breast? The breast <laughs> coaches. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm sorry, I was looking, he put on a little weight. You know. <laughs> really, we've realized nothing's off limits on this show. Yeah, so go ahead, guys. Nothing, like, nothing. Yeah. Our coaches are the breasts. They, they all look like Stefan Bonner. Uh, <laughs> Hi, oh. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, you know, we've we've got a the 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 best facility and and best coaches, you know, within at least 75 miles. Um, you know, and and you know, it's uh. Yeah, we just really try to have a good atmosphere. And, a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, try a lot of fun. fun. All right, that's fantastic. I want to let the fans know that are over there, if you go to Miller Brothers MMA and mention Stan and Bang Radio, uh, you'll get a 0% discount, and you'll also get to rub Jim's feet. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> All right, guys. I want to say thank you very much uh, for joining us tonight. Mark, thank you very much. Uh, fans, you've been listening to Stan and Bang Radio. Uh, you can see Stan and Bang on lubmma.com, L-U-B-M-M-A.com. You can also find us on iTunes, Stitcher, and pretty much anywhere else you can find sports podcasts.